the zone of interest. Um, the Jonathan. I haven't, but I saw that man's disgraceful acceptance speech. And it was a disgrace to the movie he made because that movie's a masterpiece. And I encourage you. You set it up, Maureen. I don't know if the audience knows. Uh, they may not the know. The Zone of Interest. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, a Holocaust movie. It's a Holocaust film. And it's unlike anyone that you have ever seen before. It is, it is brilliant. Um, but the director, Jonathan Glazer, who is himself Jewish in accepting his well-earned reward, got up there and said that he renounced his own Judaism because of October 7th, there was nary a word issued about October 7th on the, that stage, even when they wheeled out like Steven Spielberg on the 30th anniversary of Schindler's List. We cannot talk about what's happening in Israel right now. We can only talk about what's happening in Gaza. And the ceremony itself, the broadcast, which was supposed to start at 7 Big, 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 you know, deal that they had finally bumped this thing up an hour so people on the East Coast aren't like hung over the next morning. It started late, but they didn't say why. And it started late because pro-Palestinian protesters had blocked the route to the awards ceremony, but they couldn't exactly. even acknowledge that. It was just wild. Here's this guy turning, who made a movie about the Holocaust, who won this inter best international film for his movie about the Holocaust, who is Jewish, and his acceptance speech in which he tears on Jews in Israel. Watch. Our film shows where dehumanization leads at its worst. It shaped all of our past and present. Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. Whether the victims of October the... Whether the victims of October the 7th in Israel or the ongoing attack on Gaza, all the victims of this dehumanization, how do we resist? He refutes his Jewishness. The Holocaust has been hijacked by what's happening in Gaza. I don't even understand it, but I know enough to be offended. <laughs> I know enough to be insulted by what he's saying. How about the hostages that are still being held by Hamas. You know, this is the this is the thing that um, my just my big takeaway from that evening. Donald Trump is an extinction level event. He is a threat to humanity who must be vanquished at all costs. But Hamas is just kind of like misunderstood. They need better branding, mm. you know, so mm -hmm. allow Hollywood to do that for them. It's the strangest thing. I mean, the zone of interest. Pro is tip, pro tip. When Mehdi Hassan is praising your acceptance speech <gasps> for your Holocaust film, you're doing it wrong. Something's gone very, very, very wrong there. Um, I love what you said about Emma Stone. When she won, my team will back me up. I texted my team and I said, if I were ever to win an award, please remind me to just get up there and say the words, thank you and then sit down and not pretend that it is like winning a Nobel Peace Prize. Like their oh self-congratulatory nature. I mean, it's fine. The arts play a part in our lives and do bring some enjoyment to us. But to pretend like she had just been awarded, you know, the uh, the, the Academy Award for Curing Cancer, right? With the tears. I know. I mean, I'm I, like, oh. I can't listen. I I love the movies. I love pop culture. And this is, I, I think, why I'm really hard on it in some ways, because there's no need for that kind of hysteria. Zero. I mean, I loved right. Robert Downey Jr.'s speech in which he opened by thanking his terrible childhood. That it was amazing. Was so no perfect. Everybody knows this guy yeah. has been through it and everybody was rooting for him. And he did pretty much say thank you. I mean, he, he was a little self-important by saying, you know, everything they, they make matters. Not everything they make what matters. What we do matters. doesn't have to, you know? But um, yeah, the Emma Stone, there's always one every year. There's always one. <laughs> I know. It's too much. The best speech ever was the Joe Pesci speech in which he literally just got up there. And I think it was for Goodfellas, for Best Supporting Actor. And I think all he said was, thank you. It's my honor. And sat down. Well, it's my privilege. Thank you. Right on, Joe Pesci. 
of course, his best movie wasn't Goodfellas. It was My Cousin Vinny. That's a fact. It's just well known, right? It's well known. Agreed. Um, It's accepted. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, oh joy, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe $10,000 or $10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, even if you have the means to pay or you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private, free consultation. Or just visit tnusa.com slash Megan. tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.